I'm Jamie Stalkup, Senior Associate Editor of World Screen, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Acapulco creator and executive producer Austin Winsberg, showrunner and executive producer Sam Laybourne, and actor Enrique Arizon. To start things off, Sam, you joined as showrunner this season. What made you want to be part of the series, and what have you infused in this third season that maybe wasn't there before. You know, what is the Sam Laybourne touch, so to speak, in oh these new God. episodes? I love that. I'm in a band called the Sam Laybourne touch, by the way. <laughs> uh, first off, uh, this was a huge uh, attraction of the show. Austin uh, was my boss on Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, and uh, collaborating with him is a joy. Um, so when he asked me uh, to consider joining, it was a combination of knowing we would mind meld and and have fun storytelling together. The other piece is I was a massive fan of the show. It is uh, so wonderful to have a bilingual show that represents so many different points of view um, from the Latin community. I am a white uh, American writer, uh, and I have no illusions about that. So in all my meetings with, with staffing was about, hey, we need to do this together. And I was able to hire an incredible... Uh, all, most of the writers speak Spanish. Uh, many of them are from Mexico or, or Mexican-American. And in collaboration, uh, we were able to you know, continue the vibe of what was already there. But in terms of what we brought to it, uh, the Sam Laybourne touch, I mean, I'm just going to live on that all day, um, was really just about uh, spending two weeks, three weeks with Austin, mapping out where we wanted to go. And we want to, you know, turn up the authenticity. We have more Latinx characters in the, in the third season than the first two, and like even more. And so we can drill down into more specifics. Uh, but we also wanted to play with Eugenio's, uh, I'm a comedy writer by trade and so we wanted to dial up the comedy and really in the third season you can really trust your characters and see them do some pretty radical things um so it's a lot of big swing storytelling and austin and the you know collaborators at apple and lionsgate were incredibly supportive and tannenbaum three pass were in supportive in that process so it's really a team effort and i was very lucky to be here <laughs> And Austin, season two ended with a cliffhanger. We found out that present day Maximo has an estranged daughter. I'm curious to know how much of Maximo's life story, including this bombshell, you've had planned out from the beginning and how have your plans evolved as the seasons have gone on and you've gotten to know the characters more and gotten to know the actors and what they're capable of more. Uh, literally every single moment was planned out at the pitch stage. We knew every single thing that was going to uh, <laughs> No, I think what? that, I, I, I don't even, I, I don't think the Paloma twist came, I think that came pretty relatively later on. I don't think that twist was there from the get-go. Uh, I think there are certain twists and certain things that we know. Certainly like what Sam and I do, what we did on Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist that we worked on together and on Acapulco is at the beginning we sit down and we, together him and I for a while, will map out the whole season. So that by the time the writers come in, we have a general sense of what the arcs are, where it's gonna go, the beginning, the middle, the end. Maybe we don't know all the pieces in between and how it's exactly gonna play out, but we have a relatively good understanding. We came into this season with some big question marks of things that we had to answer that were not fully figured out by the end of season two. We had to, we had a lot of conversations about who Paloma's mom is. We had a lot of conversations about what are the ways in which Maximo breaks bad, so to speak, in season three, so that he gets everybody to be upset with him and the, what are, what are playing more into his regrets and remorse. So, you know, some of it's a fluid process. I think there's things that you sort of know or there's certain guideposts that I've had in mind from the beginning. And then the more that you talk to people, the more that you get to work with the actors and learn things and things in a good way necessarily evolve. And definitely in terms of the more that you get to know the actors, the more that you get to know everybody involved, that's always a gift in writing and mm -hmm. being able to play to their strengths and understanding the core of who people are, not just from a line delivery perspective where it's great to know that this actor can do a flip joke or, or, right, or right. turn on a dime or something like that. That's helpful for a comedy perspective, but also to know sort of the intention of someone's heart mm -hmm. or like, oh, this person is actually a really earnest person, so let's lean into that earnestness in some way or this person, mm -hmm. whatever that thing is. So I think the more time that you get to spend with people as a writer, the, the bigger gift it is because you have a deeper understanding of how to write for them. And, and then the rest is just sort of the, the ability of us together and with the other writers figuring out what it is that we want to do and how do we make it fun. My first question for you, Enrique, is 
Well, so Maximo starts out the series pretty naive, but that changes as his professional path grows. And this third season is perhaps the most pivotal time for him with Don Pablo preparing for retirement and needing someone to take over. Tell me about the ways Maximo has grown throughout the seasons. And then as an actor, what have been your favorite parts of his personality to explore and expand upon? Well, I, I love how uh, um, how ambitious uh, Maximo is, mm -hmm. how he tries to to stay true to himself. Uh, also, I, I, I think I, I connect with him uh, because we we both want to have family and fa family first and, and friends close. <laughs> and um, I think it, Maximo is is uh, it's. Uh, taking decisions, he's making this decisions, uh, but but he he has to follow his intuition, which he is, um, and it may not it may not uh, take him to to where he wants, but it's part of growing. It's part of of this journey. So Maximo is is having his own journey. He's 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 a young guy. He he's. He's just uh, he's learning from his mentor. He wants to take his place. Once once he when whenever he retires, he 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 has to he has to prove uh, to Diane that he's capable and and that he can handle the situation. So it, that's that's gonna be that that's gonna show um, a lot of fun moments that yeah. that the audience will will enjoy. And it is such a fun, lighthearted show, but there are deeper, more emotional moments, especially last season, you know, surrounding his mom's wedding, we see Maximo get choked up and on the verge of tears a couple times. I know you've acted in dramas before, so it's not like it's anything new to you, but what is it like to delve deeper into that more emotional aspect of Maximo? And is it an adjustment to make the switch from his happy-go-lucky personality to those more emotional moments? I love when he has uh, these scenes where he can like show more layers of of his of his heart. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think that's why Acapulco is so successful because it perfectly blends comedy with heart. Yeah. So you get to know each each character and you can relate to them. Um, they are they are very our characters are relatable. So um, as, uh, uh, I think I think that that comedy comes with with well with 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 truth. So if you're like playing it serious, it's come it, it, it's you you found. You found it uh, hilarious, yeah. so uh, I'm I'm focused on 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 whatever um, challenge the the scene can can have, and it's always a pleasure to to portray my 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 Maximo. I have a lot of fun and and I have a lot of support, so I I I feel like uh, like. It's my environment, and and I feel extremely free for uh, to 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 propose, to suggest, to to have my own take on the character. Well, that is all my time. Oh my god, that's Thank so fast. For, yeah, I know. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. It is such a fun series, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Thank you so oh much. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much.